Okay, welcome back. Now we're going to do another example of graphing, sketching the graph of a function. This one has a rational exponent. Okay, so one of the characteristics of when you see uh, something, a graph, uh, something like this is it's going to um, include a cusp in the graph. Okay, so let's let's find out what's going on. Okay, so let's rewrite this. Like so. Okay. Now, um, and, or we can rewrite it like uh, this as well. Okay. Either way is, is fine. Okay, now, uh, step one. Domain. Okay, so now realize um, because this is an odd root, we have no problems with the domain. Um, remember, odd roots have uh, the domain is all real numbers. Okay, and so in this case here, we have we don't have any issues um, as far as restricted values. So in this case here, the domain. is all real numbers, okay? Now, step two, we're going to look for x and y intercepts, okay? So obviously the y-intercept um, is at um, zero, one, right? Because when x is uh, zero, Right, so when x is zero, we get negative one squared, which is positive one, the cube root of positive one is one. Okay, so, and then the x-intercept um, is going to be when this is equal to zero, and the only time that this is going to be equal to zero is if x is equal to uh, one. Okay, so it's going to be one comma zero is the y-intercept. Okay. Okay, so now step three is end behavior. Okay, so again, we're going to take the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x. So now, as, as what, what's going on here? So, as x goes to positive infinity, this is also going to positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, well, what's happening here? As this goes to negative infinity, this is still going to go to positive infinity. Okay. <coughs> so we got that. Um, what else? Okay, so for uh, vertical asymptotes, um, no vertical asymptotes. Okay. No, um, horizontal asymptotes, uh, no asymptotes at all. Okay, as we can see, right? Now, what about step five? <coughs> step five is the first derivative. Okay, so now again here, I'm just gonna use the chain rule, right? So the first derivative is going to be two thirds um, times x minus one to the negative one third pop. Okay, times the derivative of the inside, which is just one. So this is going to equal uh, two 
over 3 um, oops so 2 divided by 3 times the uh, cube root of x minus 1. Okay, now, um, so we want to find out whether this is zero or undefined. Well, it's not going to be zero anywhere, but it is undefined at what? x equal to 1. So it's undefined at x equals 1. So something's going on there. Okay, so we have a critical value at x equals 1. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to split it up into two intervals, negative infinity to 1, and 1 to positive infinity, and then we're going to test the point. So in this case, I'm going to use 0. So if we plug in 0, we get a negative, right? So it's negative. Okay, and from 1 to positive infinity, if I stick in 2, I'm going to get a positive number. So now, that tells us that at 1, we have a local maximum. No, no, I'm sorry, a local minimum. Okay, so there's going to be a local minimum at 1. Okay, now 6. Now we're going to take the second derivative. Right? Now we're going to look at concavity. So, uh, now I'm going to take the second derivative of this. So again, I'm going to use the chain rule again. So this is going to give me negative uh, two, two ninths. So negative two ninths. And it's going to give me um, x minus one to the negative Four thirds. Which is going to be equal to negative two over nine times x minus one to the four thirds. And the only time this is going to be equal to, well, it's never going to be equal to zero. And it's undefined at x equals one. So we're going to split it up into the two intervals again. So negative infinity to one and one to positive infinity. Now, the thing is, is 1 is in the domain. Now, on this side, if I put in, uh, let's say, 0 in here, I get a positive number on the bottom, a negative number on top. So this is going to be negative, which means it's concave down. Now, over here, if I put in 2, I get a negative or a positive again, which is going to give me negative, which is concave down. Okay, interesting. So now, if we put all of this together, where it's going to positive infinity when we go to plus or minus uh, infinity, as x goes to plus or minus infinity, it's going off to positive infinity. There are no vertical asymptotes. We have a local minimum at x equals 1. Yet, it's concave down on both sides of x equals 1. Which leads us to believe that this is a cusp. Okay? Instead of a nice smooth, instead of doing, since it's a minimum, right? Instead of a minimum, it's not doing this, okay? 
The fact that it's concave down on both sides, it's got to be doing something like that. Because if it was a minimum doing this, then it would be concave up on this side, right? Concave up on this side as well. But it's concave down on both sides, okay? So this is where we are led to a I cusp, right? So now let's sketch this thing. Okay. So putting everything together, it's at one. So we have y intercept at zero one, x intercept at one zero, and the cusp is happening at one. So it's got to be here. So this is going to be, in fact, there's going to be another point right here at negative two. So this is going to do something like this. And that's it. Have a great day.